Jesus of Nazareth, crucified, dead. The story should end there. Yet in the aftermath of his execution, history records events that defy explanation. Shocking occurrences some tried to suppress. So what did happen after Jesus died? And how could these events possibly connect to his sacrifice? Earthquake has shattered the land. Tomes crack it open. The risen walked among us. Was this mere coincidence or a sign of something far greater? Over the next minutes, I'll reveal the five shocking events that followed Jesus' death and explore their profound connection to his legacy. As Jesus breathed his last, the world itself convulsed. In Matthew's Gospel, we read, And behold, the earth shook violently. Matthew 27, 51. It wasn't a gentle tremor, but a force that shattered the landscape. This wasn't some distant geological event. It was centered at the very heart of the religious world, Jerusalem. But even more startling, something miraculous occurred within the temple itself. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Matthew 27, 51. This wasn't a threadbare curtain fraying. This was a thick, impenetrable barrier between the holy place and the most holy place, God's own dwelling on earth, ripped apart as if by divine force. For centuries, this veil represented a chasm between sinful humanity and a perfect God. Only the high priest dared enter that most holy space once a year, offering sacrifices as atonement for the people. But now, the barrier was gone. The tearing of the veil signaled a revolution. No longer were elaborate sacrifices and priestly intermediaries required. The death of Jesus, the true Lamb of God, opened a new and living way directly into God's presence. It proclaimed that all believers, through faith in Christ, could approach the throne of grace boldly. Think of the implications. No longer would God seem distant and unapproachable. The way into true fellowship had been laid bare. Yet the story doesn't end there. Matthew's Gospel records even more unsettling events. Tombs splitting open, the dead emerging. The world as they knew it was literally breaking apart. These weren't random catastrophes. They seemed intrinsically tied to the sacrifice that had just taken place. As the weight of the world's sin pressed down upon Jesus, a strange and terrifying phenomenon descended. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Matthew 27, 45. This was no ordinary darkness, no mere passing storm. The midday sun should have been at its zenith. Astronomers confirm this couldn't have been a natural eclipse. This supernatural blackout was a tangible sign of something much deeper unfolding. In the Bible, darkness often symbolizes spiritual blindness, separation from God, and the oppressive forces of evil. For those three agonizing hours, it was as if the very light of the world had been extinguished. It's a powerful representation of the cosmic struggle playing out on the cross. Picture the scene. Roman soldiers hardened by violence stumbling in the gloom. Confused onlookers, their mockery turning to unease. The disciples gripped by a mix of grief and inexplicable fear. Think of what this darkness symbolized for Jesus himself. Not just the physical suffering, but the spiritual agony of bearing the sins of humanity even experiencing a momentary sense of separation from his Father. Some theologians see this darkness as a profound expression of the Father's own deep sorrow, as if the heavens themselves were weeping at the injustice and cruelty occurring on Golgotha. However, the story isn't over. Even in the darkest hour, there's always a glimmer of hope. The very fact that these events are recorded points to their significance. They hold a key to understanding the true nature of the sacrifice made that day. But alongside the symbolism, something else happened during those hours of darkness. Events so strange, so inexplicable. They would force both believers and skeptics then and now to re-examine everything they thought they knew. In the aftermath of Jesus' death and resurrection, Matthew's Gospel records an event so extraordinary, it challenges our very understanding of life and death. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Matthew 27, 52 and 53. Imagine the scene. The earth, already ravaged by an earthquake, now splits open. Not with the violence of destruction, but as if gently yielding up its inhabitants. These weren't mere resuscitations, but resurrections. But why? 
Why this specific moment? Some scholars suggest this was a powerful demonstration of Jesus' victory over death, a preview of his ultimate conquest over the grave. In the resurrection of these Old Testament believers, we see the promise of our own future resurrection. The phrase first fruits is used frequently in the Bible, referring to the initial portion of a harvest that guarantees a greater harvest to come. These resurrected saints are like the first fruits of a glorious resurrection, awaiting all who belong to Christ. It's important to note, there's no indication these saints lived on permanently as immortal beings. Their role was symbolic, a powerful sign in a world gripped by both grief and uncertainty. Picture the impact for those in Jerusalem. Imagine seeing familiar faces of loved ones and revered figures from history who had been long dead. Fear would have mingled with awe. For those beginning to grasp what happened at Golgotha, these resurrections were a powerful confirmation that death itself could not contain the power of Christ. But even as this event offered hope, it raised questions. What did those first moments of the saints' resurrection look like? How did their appearance in Jerusalem shape the faith of the earliest believers? And perhaps most importantly, how does their experience point us to the transformative promise that all believers hold for the future? In the Gospel of Matthew, a single sentence amidst the chaos of the crucifixion scene carries profound significance. Now when the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that were done, they were greatly afraid, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Matthew 27, 54. This was no ordinary soldier voicing an opinion. A centurion was a seasoned commander, a leader of men. He would have witnessed countless executions, become inured to suffering and death. Yet something in the events surrounding Jesus' death shook him to the core. It wasn't just the earthquake or the darkness. There was something about the way Jesus died. Some translations capture that it wasn't fear but awe that gripped the centurion. Perhaps he sensed a quiet dignity, a strength of spirit that didn't align with the cries of a criminal or defeated rebel. Others suggest that as Jesus' life slipped away, he may have cried out words of forgiveness or a powerful prayer that resonated even through the chaos. This alone would have been strikingly different for someone used to the curses and bitterness of the condemned. Whatever triggered it, the centurion's confession cut through the noise and confusion. In a society filled with gods and demigods, his words weren't a casual reference. He recognized something uniquely divine about Jesus. Imagine the ripples this caused. Other soldiers under his command hearing this, those present at the tomb later, perhaps even Roman officials receiving reports about the strange occurrences. This wasn't a proclamation fueled by blind faith, but the reluctant admission from a hardened practical man who witnessed it all firsthand. The centurion's words mark a turning point. If even those overseeing the execution couldn't deny the evidence, how would this shape the faith of the earliest disciples? Could this have even laid the groundwork for the gospel message spreading into the Gentile world? The empty tomb, the crown jewel of the greatest story ever told. All four gospel writers provide detailed accounts. Witnesses like Mary Magdalene, the apostles, and others who interacted with the resurrected Jesus couldn't deny what they had seen with their own eyes. And it wasn't simply the empty tomb itself, though, that was startling enough. The appearances of the resurrected Jesus, his interactions with the disciples, his physical body bearing the marks of the crucifixion yet now transformed, these were the ultimate proof. These events defied both logic and the natural order. Imagine after the crushing despair of the crucifixion, the utter bewilderment these early believers must have felt, Yet, these encounters with the risen Lord ignited their faith. Look at Peter. From denying Jesus three times to becoming a bold preacher of the gospel message. Look at Thomas, going from skeptic to proclaiming, My Lord and my God. John 20, 28. These weren't superstitious people easily swayed. They were individuals who transformed because of what they experienced. This conviction empowered them to risk everything to spread the good news of the risen Christ to a hostile world. But the story doesn't end in the first century. The implications of Jesus' resurrection stretch throughout history, reaching us today. The empty tomb and the accounts of his appearances are a powerful affirmation of prophecies from centuries earlier. This is a reminder that God's plans are not easily thwarted. They also foreshadow our own hope of a bodily resurrection at Christ's return. 
In a world that often values skepticism and dismisses the supernatural, the events following Jesus' death stand as an unwavering challenge. They invite us to re-examine what we believe possible and to consider the transformative power of true faith. Could the strange events witnessed 2,000 years ago hold answers to our deepest questions about mortality and the true meaning of life? And with everything we've seen, is it possible there are still more startling details, more secrets yet to be unlocked about the fallout from Christ's sacrifice? The world witnessed something extraordinary in those days surrounding the death of Jesus of Nazareth. Ancient barriers shattered. The veil between humanity and divinity was rent. Death itself stumbled in the wake of impossible resurrection. These weren't random cosmic occurrences, but the echoes of a love story spanning millennia. Think of the tears shed at the foot of that cruel cross. Imagine the desolate stillness of a world seemingly abandoned by hope. Yet even in the darkest hour, a flicker remained. A testament to the unyielding love of a God who refused to let darkness have the final word. The sacrifice made that day was not merely a historical footnote. It's a personal invitation for each one of us. An invitation into a relationship with a God who weeps with us in our suffering and who longs to heal our deepest wounds. It's an invitation to experience the same transformative power that resurrected saints from their sleep and turned fearful disciples into bold witnesses. Perhaps you've walked a road filled with pain and disillusionment. Perhaps the weight of doubt or past wounds feels too heavy to bear. In the events following Jesus' death, we see a powerful truth. Even when everything seems lost, hope persists, love prevails. The possibility of a brand new beginning shimmers out of the very heart of darkness. This isn't a promise of an easy life. Suffering and hardship are woven into the fabric of our world. But it is a promise that we are not alone, that our struggles are witnessed by an all-powerful and deeply compassionate God. It's a promise of a future beyond anything we can imagine. So open your heart. Let the extraordinary events of those days ignite a spark in your own soul. Whether you're returning to faith or encountering this story for the first time, there's room for you. You are part of something bigger, a story of love and redemption that stretches through the ages. Real quick, now you can engage even more and support this channel by becoming a member. Becoming a member unlocks amazing resources and helps you connect even deeper. Get access to every image I use, perfect for your wallpaper, studies or presentations. Need a custom visual for a study group or a Bible verse that speaks to you? I'll design it. And members get to suggest entire video topics they'd love to see explored. Honestly, this is about more than perks. It's your chance to directly shape the content and help me create videos that matter most to you. Check the description for details. Thanks so much for being part of this community. God bless.